Listen, Google just dropped Bard AI, a big update to it. AI, AI, AI for generative AI, AI, flying AI, AI with AI. With AI. Power of AI. AI, AI model. AI with Google's AI. And it's going to compete directly with ChatGPT. Google has seen ChatGPT as an existential threat after Microsoft invested heavily into it and people are all going over there with their queries. The Bard AI is pretty impressive. And in this video, I'm literally gonna take the same exact five prompts that a cybersecurity engineer professional would use and I'm gonna stick it in ChatGPT. I'm gonna stick it in Bard. We're gonna look at the results. You are going to be stunned at what we discover. I've already done a quick little preview for myself to make sure that this concept's gonna work and it was unbelievable. Also stay tuned to the end because there I'm gonna show you two things that Bard can do that ChatGPT cannot do that make quality of life for anyone using these products a million times better. It's gonna be great. All right, so really quickly at Paul AI on Twitter, I was on Twitter a little while ago and I saw this update and I'm like, wow, is this legit connected to the internet in real time? Wow, okay, let's see what's going on. And then Google IO is going on, they dropped some updates. So I really was motivated to do this. Now you can see here, we've got our bar.google.com up and we've got our chat openai.com up. Now, what are some of the use cases that we're gonna be looking at? Well, one, from a CTI cyber threat intelligence analyst, they're writing reports all the time. Can we use it to write reports faster, especially because BARD has real-time data connected to the internet? Also, I want to do a coding example. We have seen ChatGPT write code in the past, like actual programming code. Can Bard do that? And are there benefits to one or the other? Also, code obfuscation, JavaScript obfuscation, PowerShell obfuscation. This is a very common technique by threat actors to make analysis of malware very, very difficult. Can ChatGPT analyze it? Not just break it down, but actually tell us what it's doing. Can Bard do it? This one was my favorite use case and you're gonna be stunned at what um, results are. The next option, I'm gonna drop a piece of malware into these systems and see if it can tell whether or not it is malware. This is huge for SOC analysts, for time saver, kind of a tier zero analyst aid using AI to expedite things. And again, stay tuned to the end because Bard does two specific things that ChatGP does not do. That is a quality of life upgrade that I absolutely love. Like I'd be stunned if ChatGP doesn't implement this as soon as possible. Okay, so time for our first query. R just recently, Dallas, Texas was hit by ransomware. So I'm gonna go to work on Monday, say at Charleston, South Carolina, and the mayor is gonna be like, Jerry, you're in charge of cyber for the city. What does this mean for us? Are we susceptible? What happened in Dallas? So let's drop in, write me a threat assessment report intended to be read by the mayor of Charleston about the recent Dallas, Texas ransomware and how it could affect Charleston. Let's put that in ChatGPT and Bar and see what we get. I'm gonna compare these two uh, apples to apples. I do like that the Bard one gave uh, more current events, more actionable, you know, kind of like reasonable information that you would expect to get if you're writing a report based on an event, right? If your boss says write a report for this uh, incident, you're going to include uh, key details. Now it gets a little generic over here. And then the uh, implementation and ideas for what it should do for the city of Charleston, I found a little lackluster going back to chat GPT. They say backups, incident response planning, strength and cybersecurity. Th those are all pretty generic too. I will say that um, ChatGPT did offer more intel. Um, I might even ding ChatGPT for that one now that I think about it, simply because this is supposed to be a sit rep report for the mayor, not a lengthy brief for you know a, a, a coordinator who's actually gonna take action on some of these things. Um, there's three options in here, which I do like. They're all generic, right? Have a plan for response, train employees, et cetera. I'm a little disappointed that neither of them gave any context. It mentions that Charleston's a port city, but it doesn't mention anything around you know, being a port city and what that could indicate or being in the South and what that could indicate or the fact that Spartanburg, South Carolina also suffered a ransomware attack just recently too. So I uh, would uh, wish a little bit more from that. Let's do the next one. The next one is a uh, write a Sigma rule for Mimikatz, okay? This is uh, basic SOC analyst stuff here, right? Write a SOC analyst rule for Mimikatz. Let's see what it does. Okay, chat GPT, detect Mimikatz rule status. It's got the right formatting, references, category process creation, windows, uh, and it's looking for some of these 
Uh, executables on the command line, level high. Okay, so let's look at the code snippet here. This one, the rule's a little bit different, a little bit more involved. It does include uh, process create, file create. It includes command.exe as the parent process. I do not think that, yeah, ChatGPT did not get that. I'll have to get your thoughts on this. Uh, Socky analysts in, who are in chat, put your th comments below if you have experience with Sigma rules and you have an idea. This one looks more robust and more, you know, less likely to have false positives, frankly, than the chat GPT one. So I'm going to give the point to Bard here. The next one, and this one's my favorite one. This is this one's crazy. Okay, if you get obfuscated uh, code, like you find a, a random uh, artifact on your on an endpoint in your environment, or you know an attachment in an email, you want to check it out. Check this uh, command out. We're going to ask chat GPT, explain this code to me. What does this JavaScript function do? And here's the obfuscated code. Looks like a hot mess on fire, right? You don't, No one's going to analyze this or understand what the crap's going on. Let's look at this guy. He's going to work it. ChatGPT says, the code you provide is compressed and obfuscated expression, difficult to understand. It appears to be an example of code golfing or intentionally writing code in a concise and cryptic manner rather than readability. I've never heard of code golfing. Uh, original, so, so ChatGPT just tells us it's obfuscated, which we already knew. Now let's do uh, Bard and see what we get here, okay? Bard has taken the code. This is literally what the deobfuscated version of the code is. It was a simple piece of code. I wasn't going to put malware in here, but you can see in a matter of seconds, not only is Bard explaining to us what the code is in detail, it is rewriting it in a way that an analyst can easily digest and understand. And it did it in a matter of seconds. I can't tell you how many times I've had to, you know, stick code into deobfuscate or web apps or you know, just hook the eval function so I could see what it does. This is an incredibly ridiculous time saver. Point barred. Now the final one I wanna do is this malware. If I give you an MD5 hash, can you tell me if it's associated with malware? You find a, a file on your network, you get a hash on it, you throw it in here. You could go to VirusTotal obviously, but if you have this automated with APIs, this could happen automatically, right? As an AI language model, I don't have real-time access to databases. This is another shortcoming of ChatGPT. So this doesn't even really tell us or help us. Now, let's look at Bard. I'm telling you guys. What's Bard do? Yes, it's a hash. It's associated with malware. It's a sample for an Android banking trojan, Texas Mobile 14 Uncle. It's designed to steal credit cards. This has given us actual intel that we can use to realize whether or not something is potentially malware or not. Let me just give you the two bonus tips now. On Bard, you can't see it right now because my face is in the way, but you can literally use the microphone so you don't even have to type the prompts. Write Mimi Cats in PowerShell. Now that didn't work, right? Mini Cats, okay? Write Hello World in JavaScript. Now I'm just making these prompts up, right? There we go, so it did it right away. And then the final thing I wanna show you that is absolutely awesome is the ability to export out of right here. You see this? you can export out. So a lot of times I write prompts and then I say, do it in CSV form or do it in this form. You can literally just right click and export right out of Bard. Way more powerful, all right? Guys, I'm telling you, this is a fair apples to apples test and Bard is just stomping on ChatGPT. I'm going to be evaluating Bard a whole lot more. Let me know in the comments, what are your experiences? Are you using Bard now? Have you done a comparison between Bard and ChatGPT? Are you finding other features that other people would really enjoy? Drop them in chat below. I'd love to continue this conversation. And let me know if you wanna see more uh, AI kind of Bard versus ChatGPT or just Bard videos. I think I'm gonna start using Bard a whole lot more. I gotta tell you, it's very, very impressive. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. If you want more content like this, check the channel, hit sub, and obviously hit the bell for notifications because I'm pushing out content literally every single day. You get on it. It's good stuff. All about good times. Until next time, stay secure.